Uh, those same folks that are in those spaces and trying to drive these conversations, though, it was the mo- it was the most many week in sports from a from a cultural standpoint. Naomi, shout out Naomi Osaka. She uh, released her statement initially, like ahead of time, like, hey, just the way my mental health is set up, fam, I'm not doing no press. Like, I just don't, I don't have the, the, the bandwidth for it. I already suffer with social anxiety. Like, really, like some some bold shit to say ahead of time. They ain't like that. She even, she came out and apologized. Like, my bad, I handled that wrong. Since I handled it wrong, I'm going to stay at home. Like, did it, couldn't have done it anymore by the book. So there was people that were mad, people that were applauding her. It was, it was, every everyone was there. Anthony Davis literally pulls his growing and everybody gets on the internet like, you old soft, fragile ass nigga, street clothes. What, what, what? Street so clothes, then, Davis. So then, so then, cause you, cause you, cause you telling me I can't do something, I'm, I'm about to play. She it would have been me. <laughs> and, he, and hurt herself even and, more. And got, and got hurt even more. Let me tell you, I would have done it. No, no, I no, no. So everybody would have done it because, because the the, the the internet culture is like, but, but which one is it? It was the same people. Oh, Naomi, you so brave. Like literally, if you go look on certain people's timeline, Snoop, I love you, but you sick, bro. Um, I'm so proud of Naomi. Oh my God! And then literally, his next post is so soft ass nigga, man. I miss Kobe. Bro, wait a minute. That is nuts. <laughs> so you gonna bully, bro, in the in, <laughs> over basketball? Yeah, but I don't think it was the internet. I think it was for sure yeah. uh, Charles Barkley and. What? No, uh, it was for sh- like it was like it was the names inside the in, the peer group. Yeah, no, for, for the, sure. It was the it was Charles Barkley. It was Stephen A. Where well, Stephen A. is probably the nastiest because Stephen A. bullied him beforehand off the Charles Barkley thing. And then he played, and then right after the game, he was talking about there were people within the camp that, for, that we're not going to say who it was, but it was definitely clamming and forcing him to play that night. It's like, no, the people are you. Yeah, the people like, are you, <laughs> sir. Like, you, got, you, got the, you got the loudest of voices in sports, bro. Like, the, the shit was you, bro. But, like, you know. But I, I'm, I, internet I, for sure, though. Internet for sure. Um, and, and the only reason I use the internet, G, and, and, and I... And, I sh- shouldn't generalize it that like that and be more specific, but the the Charles Barkleys and their platforms leaks into the internet. They're all a part. So they're of all, it's all it's all a, because that's where they're kind of getting. That's where that's because people don't you know people don't. That's people, people are they grow up in the the online news cycle, so they just get probably a minute, thirty seconds to a minute of information, and then they're posting something. The the mental health conversation for Black folks this publicly is new. Everybody's acting a little bit more informed than they are. They're using terms and they're misappropriating terms. Listening to Joe Budden talk about mental health is the most. <laughs> I it I literally get sick because I want to listen to the show and support, but it's like, bro, what are you saying right now? Like, do you like if if you suffer from any form of mental illness, bet, but appropriating it like this is it's it's just sad. It's really sad to see, but it's not just him. It's a lot of spaces that are doing it. Um, but in particular, the collective conversation amongst black folks and trying to, trying to advance in that space and, and, you know, and share our experience as a therapy and encourage people to go seek help. Like, how, how are we justifying, again, to move in the goalposts morally, how are we justifying literally doing both in the same, that should happen in like less than a 24 hour, like news cycle. I mean, to be, to be fair, they did it to Naomi too. Like, yeah, there was there was a no. no uh, I'm start I'm starting with Naomi. They did it to her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're putting them in the same yeah, boat just, as far. Just, okay. Okay. Like how like how can one if 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 we use Stephen A. Mm-hmm. Stephen A. applauds Naomi. Oh, got you. Okay. And it turns around and go Anthony Davis. You saw. Got it. <laughs> Skip Bayless called uh, Paul George and Kawhi Leonard dumb and dumber. Fam, this isn't journalism anymore. You're not just covering sports. You like att- you're attacking people, and it's good. We normalize it, and accept it, and and even chime in on it and make it a part of the culture. So it's like, as we try to advance and 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 include all these things in our in our reprogramming, depro like wh- wherever we are in that in that sort of process, we can't even really fuck around and get on the same page as a whole. But I think it's because anybody in the public eye, in any realm of entertainment and sports, 
is a is seen as a product mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. They're not a human first. They're a product first. Mm -hmm. You're a product for my entertainment first. Mm -hmm. And so even with Naomi, it's like you were a product. Everybody was mad. And then they're like, oh, well, now let's care about this human. And I think with sports, I mean, it's, it happens with sports all the time. And especially, especially with men, like there is even more of this sense of like you should – you know, it's it's a very like shut up and dribble. And the crazy shit is we got really angry about a white woman saying that without acknowledging how frequently we do that to our own people. Come on. And how it's you're a product. Yeah. And yeah, that was the hardest thing for me to wrap my brain around when I was playing college basketball. It's like that's the first time it was No, nigga, it was, you it just was, ended up in the whitest place in America though. That that you gotta you can't just say playing college basketball. You gotta so, say no, I went to Spokane. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like but like playing it playing in that type of cycle because that's we're we're at the top of the food chain as far as like basketball goes in the city and then also in the nation. Uh so there was a lot of attention to it. But the business of it is something that you can't escape. Is just like how much of a product and a commodity you become mm -hmm. at that level. Like it was almost it takes you back to certain days, and it just made me feel uncomfortable because, of course, I'm black around white folks, and then having to go to like banquets and dinners and basically be on display and like the way that it's an auction block, bro. Bro, the way that the way that they set it up though is so foul. Like like it's something where like okay, you wouldn't. Pick up on it if you're, you know. It's modern sorry, day slavery. It's for sure that in the um in like the in like the sports realm, it's just that I, it was hard. To, it was hard to wrap your brain around that and then openly, like, be able to go and practice and get your game, like, play your game and like, and then also play in games. You know the way that you're viewed. Like, it's kind of hard to separate the two. You know what I mean? Like it, when they start, when it starts getting muddy that type of way, it's really, really tough to just be like, "Oh, athlete, just be athlete, well, be athlete now." <laughs> would you stay, stay with that the the ment so the mental aspect of the game? I, I we went up and uh, produced something for Dame, and it was just the way he was talking about it. Like it was all strategy, but so it's like, bro, you tapped into something different. If you can talk about the game that on TV is looks like it's moving hella fast. He's figured out how to just slow it down and pick mm -hmm. it apart, but it's a it's a confidence thing too, um, and to 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 the point that you just said, G, like when you practice and getting better and focus on the game, it's like that, like bro, it's hard to be confident in that space. Like, what was the what was the mental, you know, the the mental deterioration around your your confidence? Like, what you you've talked about it before, but yeah, the. See, the confidence isn't so much an issue. It's more so the the idea of what you're doing it for. So if your purpose is changing, it's going to be very difficult for you to to go back into whatever field you're doing to do it at the maximum capacity that you can do it mm -hmm. if your purpose is switching. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's damn near impossible because you, now it's being viewed as work as opposed to something that you just naturally do. And the longer that you can stay, I always say this, like the longer you can stay ignorant about something, the better when it comes to just trying to occupy whatever that space is. Because once you start gaining awareness for things, then it, it you know, naturally you're going to go through a period, a period where you have to get past that in order to start thinking about the strategic portion of things, which means you'll have to have a support system to help you through the the newfound awareness that you're garnering about whatever space you're in. So you kind of have to have that to get to the next phase of now being strategic. You know, like you don't, and you don't get, you don't do st strategy without the awareness part. So it's a, it's different tiers to it. Man, watching uh, what, what LeBron and Rich Paul and that whole crew has done with Clutch. Support system. Support system, right? Um, and when we, you know, just talking about Talking about commitment to to a long game, um, and and understanding what you know, what wealth that that type of wealth and that type of building uh, a system and control could, you know, you could carve out a lot of space. They invested early. Brian tells his best friends like, "Hey, fam, 
I'm not about to just hand you no bread. Y'all go to school, do this, learn this, and we could build a business and really take over some shit. And Rich Paul just took it on one, like, and is about to do be a, be a multi billionaire on his own separately from being Bron's partner. Um, but imagine building a system like that um, in, a, in in the sports world where the middlemen of agents and managers and all that shit has one, been one of the most consistent and thriving businesses and still going, trying to have a conversation in and around like, yeah, white athletes ain't about to let me represent them, though. <laughs> you know, like... You building, you know, the pot. The, the pot is going to become what the pot is going to become. Massive. You go to build a network, and they're like, "Nah, bro, I, or or not even nah, just just avoid you at all it's costs." <laughs> what, say it. Oh no, I just told her when it when the pot go popping, I'm the I'm the executive producer, I'm the manager, I'm the assistant. I'm getting a check. Hey, should should have been in here a while in the day. <laughs> I'm doing the negotiations. I'm doing it all. So I don't know why y'all talking about what ifs. No, 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 no. We no, we got the we got the team on lock. It's me. Ain't no team. So when y'all so no, not even the team, but when you go to expand. Mm -hmm. The way that just stressed me out. (laughs) When you you go to expand in other shows and and you and you ain't there's no question in the When I start my magazine, because that's what that's what I'm trying to do. There's no question in the rep and everything you you've pulled off and you still there's still a like but but you, that's Absolutely. cute and all, but Absolutely. it ain't, it ain't what this other company's in. It's like, wait, Clutch as a sports agency is generating more than they're competing with the companies that have been around for almost a hundred years now, you know. And there's still it's like, nah, but y'all, you little little black bro, you cute, <laughs> like, but that's it. That's where it stops. It's a play though. I res- I respect Rich Paul for the play. But to be truthful, would you rather? It's like what Jay said. But would you rather be Rich Paul, that can get any and all black athletes, or would you like to be the the white agents that are struggling now to get the black athletes when the when seventy percent of the landscape is black? You know what I'm saying? No, so it's, it, it's it's a, it's an amazing play on Rich Paul's part. It's an amazing play. It's an amazing play just to put that out there. Yeah, just to dr- just to drive the conversation. Yeah, up. but I'm pretty sure you can get like Tyler Hero. He, no, they they got they got him. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, That's what I'm saying. Him. So like it's it's gonna be specific white bread. Like you don't even want like who do you want? You don't want Pazingas, bro. I don't want Pazingas. But the, I think the the point because that that uh that conversation was was a lot longer than the excerpt yeah, that was yeah, pulled. Yeah, yeah. It was talking about eventually landing in positions of ownership where mm-hmm. where the where the faces of the league are predominantly black in that in that capacity and there's like not one single black person a part of ownership of any team and specifically talking about the NBA and the NFL it's not any for miles you know mm-hmm. uh, not even not any even any prospects it's like what what has to happen and that's the part that it's going to be rough because that's a gentleman's club and it's just like mm-hmm. trying to add trying to um join a golf a golf course you know like it's a gentleman's club like it's not like uh that's that's a that's a standard that's already put in place those fe- those folks would have to die and their children would have to overly fuck with you in order for that to be for there to be a change of guard like that but most of most of the owners are going to be more on the Donald Sterling side than Jesus. You know, then be on like the Mark Cuban side. Like I think Mark Cuban would give opportunities all day. If the, it just depends on like what your, uh, like what your mindset is or what it is, like what you bring to the table. That's all. That's all he's gonna be tripping off of. But if all of the, like all the, all the owners that you don't even know the names of, like you don't know any of the baseball owners, you can barely say who who all the NFL owners are. There's a few of them that's in, that's in the limelight. And then can you give me how many of the basketball owners can you give me you know what i mean like these are people that are like um bro that that oversees um universal like these are just names that you hear from a pipeline you don't mm. know if it's an actual person you know mm. what i'm saying like that's just like those those groups of individuals and they have to vote in order for you to come in i didn't know that like it's it's a lot that goes on goes into play on like becoming an owner or my, something it's so across the board um uh, some something Randy said yesterday that was I mean you know it but when you hear it said with specific language it helps. Um, 
how much of the black wealth is generated through sports and entertainment. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just what it is. <laughs> it's just, it's just, <laughs> uh, sim- yeah. Simple as that. Um, 